people uh, up here, former officials who now work in, work in the private sector, they come on and Hello? They're, they're like, you know, Hello? experts on TV and this kind of thing. Hi, and guys. they're often not identified it's been by a the while. company. They're identified and, as a former um, counterterrorism official. I guess and it's I think, starting you know, to feel weird for me because... And um, television watchers um, deserve to know that they have another interest. I got scared, you know, company. like I thought... And, I that it's, I it's should only be producing now. a certain kind of well, thing. Of making these sound collages, and I was thinking how valuable and important that was, and got me thinking yeah, how much I missed just uh, this uh, stuff where we're just hanging out. And I'm well, and to I, I would disagree with that. I mean, I mean, I think some I of it is it obviously, you know, it's well spent and needs to be done. But guess, there's many projects that we find out about. But uh, at the same time, I think you just want to hear my voice. You know, the corruption side of this, but uh, you know, so I've done some stories where you know I talked to whistleblowers who left the national security agency. Maybe it's that weird sense of sincerity again. Waste fraud and abuse they witnessed with contracted programs where the contractors very even thought out and yet immediate. You know, new developments uh, for the agency it's been that never came through. A while. Um, I, know about, I always wondered why vloggers talked about the the hard stuff, you know. The the struggles in, in their their lives. And it's because they just want well, you to know that it, it's hard to be who you are, no matter who you are. And I don't think of that as a bad thing either. It's kind of a, a challenge for all of us to, to figure it out. And sometimes uh, it's just we've, we've chosen a hard path for ourselves. And hard just meaning that it's, it's a challenge that we're going to overcome. And it's just a, a matter of learning. And um, how I learn is I, I, I capture moments of the next now and then kind of think about them for a while and replay them and then loop them and in weird ways sometimes it's through reading a journal post blog post email and looking at, you know, what's a little going recording on, of a conversation the that I didn't think would mean so much, uh, but the, the through its repe repetition, it's kind of taken on, on a, a uh, mantra in, effect in contracting in the press or, or well. some kind uh, of slow, steady, ritualistic pause, which is just helpful, money. just like and a little reset button kind of saying, you're here, you're, you're now, and that's the most important thing. And it's kind of like having a lucid dream where you have to remind yourself that it's a dream. Well, you also have to have a reminder that, that this is reality. And we're, we're thinking about important issues in real time and solving philosophical quandaries just for ourselves. And that, that meaning there is very important and shouldn't be overlooked. And cultivating this kind of active inner life isn't easy, but it's exciting. Everything is happening for the first time. And I'm feeling really grateful for all of these magnificent creative experiences that I've had. And I'm very interested in having more, but I think at the same time I need to think about my approach and how it affects my life. Because ultimately I've been in this active state and it's consuming, it's exciting. I, I just want to continue learning and growing and looping and finding these mysterious stories. Let me tell you about the mysterious stories. I look into my mind's eye and find a very curious sensation. There's a whole dimension there. Crazy. Unbelievable. Difficult to understand. These little creatures run around. They're just dancing, you know, like they're having a party in my head. And I only see them for 
If you split seconds, but these creatures are not to get the essence of wonder about what they on the other side. This world, among others, I bet, wait for me there, my mind. And I'm thinking that they wait there for you, too. And that is so uh, with this video, I, I call to action, call to arms, um, help me uh, live in this world and share it with you. As a patron of the arts in the digital age, what is valuable ultimately isn't the way art, you know, exists, but that it exists for you. And so that's why I think, like, direct art is a way of connecting on a, on a very deep and meaningful level. And as I mentioned, I think that this, this meaning that we find together is so important for us, for each other, how we relate to the world. And it sounds corny, I know, but it's at the same time probably one of the most intense opportunities that you thought might not come along. Come along. But that's where it's not true. We've evolved into these very techno-integrated broadcast species, which kind of lends to this idea of how we can become integrated in this new way of relating to each other. Uh, that might not be a lot of sense, but I like to think of this as the end cap. If we were traveling back through time, you would start to see this relationship of ours unfold from the end to the beginning. And so this is not the beginning. This is the end. This is the end of you wondering what's going on on the other side. The dimension where these creatures stand. Strange and blurry. Yes.